At the end of last year, we took a look back at some of my favorite Home Assistant features that were released in 2021 after an amazing year for the Home Assistant project. And as we are now in 2022, I thought it would make sense to take a look at what features and improvements I would like to see added this coming year and why I think they would be beneficial. These are features that I would personally like to see. Maybe they aren't for everyone and you don't agree and you want to see some other feature added. So go ahead and leave a comment with what features or improvements you would like to see and maybe it will get added this coming year too. And let's begin. Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year. Feature or rather improvement number one that I would like to see is one that I'm sure we can all agree would be great is making all of the integrations available inside of the UI rather than being split between the UI and configuration files. Currently, there is a lot of integrations available in the UI, but also a lot that need to be configured inside of configuration files, resulting in this sort of weird split that can sometimes be off-putting to beginners. It used to be that all of the integrations were done inside of configuration files, and then in the last few years or so, they started making integrations available to configure in the UI, which was much more user-friendly. And it's basically just gonna take a bit of time for all of the remaining integrations to be moved over into the UI. Each release that comes out seems to resolve more and more of them and add more and more to the UI, but hopefully 2022 is the year that the rest are going to be complete. And this isn't just limited to integrations, but it'd be really cool to see everything else move over into the UI too, like groups and Lovelace cards are all fully available in the UI, making things much easier for people to get started with Home Assistant. And speaking of Lovelace cards, feature number two that I would like to see going into 2022 is the ability to drag and drop cards in the Lovelace UI. This would be a great feature that would help users to tweak and customize their dashboards without needing a deep knowledge of Lovelace and make the overall UI feel more intuitive. Oh, and another thing is that it would be amazing to be able to change styles and colors of Lovelace cards right from the card selector. Currently, styling of cards is much more difficult and involved for the average user, where you need to apply CSS styling to your theme or to the Lovelace configuration file itself. But imagine if you could just go into the card selector and change even basic things like card colors or font sizes, titles, alignments, that would be a big step in the right direction. Number three is one that I really want, but also one that I know that you guys really want, and that is being able to add a secondary data disk and or mount NAS disks for storing the media directory on, which would then allow us to offload recordings from Frigate or double take onto a separate disk or location just dedicated for that function. That way, if you accidentally fill up the media directory on Home Assistant, it doesn't stop your whole Home Assistant instance from working. And the amount of times I have been asked if it's possible to do this after we did all of the Frigate videos is insane. And I would personally agree, and I think this would be a really useful addition if you could move all of the media directory onto its own separate disk. Arriving at the fourth feature that would be really great to see is for Home Assistant to be able to control some of the basic functionality of our phones through the companion app. Right now, Home Assistant can currently read when your next alarm is, or if you have Do Not Disturb on, as well as a bunch of other useful information and sensors. But imagine if you could actually set your alarm through the companion app, or set do not disturb mode to be on. For example, when Home Assistant detects I'm in bed, it would be super cool if Home Assistant could turn on do not disturb so that my notifications aren't going off all night and interrupting sleep. Or same goes for when Home Assistant detects I'm in a meeting, having that automatic functionality would come in clutch. Typically, this would require a third party app with something like Tasker on Android, and I'm not sure if it's even possible on iOS, but having this functionality built into the native companion app would be really cool. The fifth and final feature I'd love to see is more granular control over user accounts. Right now you can currently make users an administrator or a regular user, and that's about it. But it'd be really great to be able to choose which functions a user can or cannot control or even see, 
and even selecting which add-ons they can or cannot see. So for example, if I don't want the user to be able to access the ESP Home add-on, but I do want them to be able to access the Frigate UI so that they can check security recordings, then I would love to be able to select and control that with user permissions. Then you could even perhaps restrict access to be able to view and add integrations, but allow access to add NFC tags, for example. Granular permissions would be a very welcome addition for many of us Home Assistant users who have multiple users all accessing the system. And again, it would be a really nice addition for perhaps if you had guests around or for those of you who have wall tablets. I think there are a ton of use cases for improved granular permissions, and I'm sure that this is one that is already on their radars. So there we go, there is five features and improvements that I would personally love to see over the next year. And like I say, these are just some that I like and that I think would be really useful. But make sure to leave me your features that you would love to see in the comments down below. Love reading all of your comments and suggestions and it's great to see that the ideas that other people have. And you never know which, what kind of conversation that we could be having in a year's time. Maybe some of these features will actually be added. Anyways, that is about going to do it from me for this video. And if you would like to support the channel, then you could do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.